day, another vlog. Great to have you all back here. Uh, big show. We've got the Ford announcement. We're going to get into that. We've also got some other stuff. Another truck that's in Australia just now, just been released, um, and some other exciting stuff. Um, on the video front, pretty much close. I've just got to go through and do the final touches on it and put all the details for the photos up and then I should be able to render. So we're looking pretty good for tomorrow night. Now I've got the sh show with Jack, Jack's first ever show, uh, the local show tomorrow, but I'm fingers crossed I can get the show out in the morning before I have to go to that. So should be okay for tomorrow's show. And then tomorrow night I'll, have, I'll set it up as a premiere tonight uh, for the video to go live for day eight out at um, the Na the Gap and the Natural Bridge in Albany. So that's coming, should be to will be out tomorrow night. I uh, shouldn't see any dramas. I hopefully can finish it off today, download it, get it all done and dusted for you tonight. So, typically. Winner, winner, finally got there. Yeah. <laughs> hectic, hectic days. Yes, fun and stuff. So now let's get into news because there's a heap of news and two main vehicles I want to talk about. We're going to talk about the new RAM first. We'll start with the stuff that's actually happening and, and what we can get hold of in Australia. Um, so that's probably the big news. New RAM 1500, the fifth generation. Now, it's a little weird. Uh, being a global internet, uh, we know everyone in the world knows what everyone else is doing in the world. For some reason, companies think that we're silly here in Australia and we don't follow the internet, but they've announced these as brand new trucks, the fifth generation, the greatest. These trucks have literally been available on the, on the lots in America for over two years. Um, this is now the big display. The, the main difference is the big like 10, 11 inch screen in your dash that controls all your in-cab features, music and maps and all that sort of stuff. The current generation are like three to four years old that we're currently selling. So this new, we're finally caught up. We're about two to maybe three years behind America. So these ones we're getting now are not brand new trucks, they're old models. So please be aware of that if you are looking at them, just be aware you, you are getting old stock or an old, uh, old design from Ram in America, it ain't the current design. So in that regards, a little bit mm, disappointing. It's good that we finally got them here because they this is the truck that actually has won a heap of awards and beat Ford and Chevy and a lot of different departments. So it's gonna be a good truck. Unfortunately, it's priced as such as a new truck. So the older models, the fourth generation, you can now pick them up, I think for about 89,000. Yeah, so you can get a 80 grand, the last gen, the Express at 80 grand uh, in Australia. Um, but these new models, so the base model, they are not, they're not bringing out the base models in the new 5th gen, they're starting at a higher level. So it is a 115,000 for the Laramie version of that. So you get your Laramie four-wheel drive and that's going to be 115 Aussie for the base entry price for these new ones. And that goes all the way up to well, probably going to be 160 to 180,000 bucks, similar to the F-150 as well here in Australia. So. Look, it's got all the new stuff uh, a little bit behind the times, but at least it's, it is in Australia. You can buy it in Australia, and it's had there's a decent amount of support with the Ram Australia. Uh, well, that, that do bring it in and swap them over to right hand drive, the right way to drive. Um, so yeah, look, that's pretty cool. They are good. It's got all the bells and whistles that you can imagine. Um, you do have to add on a bit of other stuff as well. There's another thousand bucks for metallic paint, uh, another seven grand for driver assisted power steps, which you're probably gonna add if you're spending this. It is a luxury car prices for a work ute. That's the bit I have. The only bit I have them, they are beautiful. Uh, one of my best mate Curtis has got a Ram, he's got the older model, but it's deluxe. It's just so nice to be in them beautiful car to drive, the big Hemi engine's amazing. Literally super quiet on the highways. You can see why they are so popular, but for the money you get, you sort of get a little bit of luxury, but then they're charging you for all these luxury features for the 150, 160 grand top of the range ones. Realistically, you should get all that thrown in for nothing. So in that regards, look, 
It's, it's positive that they are here. Finally, we've got the current model RAM in Australia, as you, as a, you can actually buy it. Uh, it's a little bit negative that the prices are going up even more, so it's a little bit crazy. If it was 80,000 for the base model, and then 150 for the top of the range, that would be like, that would sell even more because the 80 is only five grand more than the Ranger Raptor. Uh, that's a perfect sort of stepping stone up to go up. So, look, I think uh, they will sell a heap of these. Uh, they've got they've been doing really well for the last few years. Um, Ram's done a good job in Australia to sort of sell their product. They've got a good product. It is probably the best youth realistically at the moment. Uh, well, that current this new current model is was the best in America for the last couple of years. Um, it's great to see it finally hit our shore. So. Hope you got your shekels all saved up. You can go and get yourself one of those fifth generation. If not, there's some bargains. You can go get that base model uh, current or the fourth gen, so four years old, 80 grand. Basically, you can get a big pickup, you brand new. So brand new with the conversions all done and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool, I thought. So um, go check that out. Now, other thing I will say with this, uh, a little bit concerning for the money you get, it has zero ANCAP rating. So for whatever reason, Ram Australia has not tested the previous gen or has not tested this car yet. So it hasn't, you've got to supply ANCAP with so many cars that they trash and crash and smash. So they can give you an ANCAP rating. So it's never gonna be able to get on a mine site, which is where actually these things really would shine. Uh, these would be fantastic to have these as a work unit on a mine site. We need that size, the Hilux is a crap. Uh, the Land Cruiser does it, but it's a pretty crap car to drive. It's nowhere near comfortable as the Ram or an F-150. Unfortunately, there's no air cap rating, so we can't do it, because uh, all the mine sites have to apply for their insurance and all that rubbish. Usual stuff that takes all the fun out of life. But yeah, so be aware, zero end cap rating, you cannot get that. That may affect your insurance as well. So probably check as well before you do go to buy. Um, it might be something that, uh, give a bit of reflection there, um, that you may have to be concerned about. Now, the big news, we went for a couple of days. I did say the other day that it was probably gonna be, uh, I guess, not a game changer, it's not a game changer. Tesla did the game changer with electric vehicles. They did it with the side now and the side of the truck. Rivian has sat back quietly and I think the Rivian is gonna be a brilliant car. But I did say the other day, the F-150, the new lighting, which got released today, and I'm gonna to go through it all with you, uh, is gonna be one of those ones that changes electric vehicles on a whole because it is the biggest selling vehicle on the planet uh, by far, I think they sell something ridiculous, ridiculous like 50 or 60,000 cars a month. Uh, it is insane how many of these they sell. Uh, that has the ability, uh, mass production, to minimize costs, to get to a wide audience and let everyone see these electric cars and what they can do. Uh, it's a big, big deal. And Ford spent a fair bit on this show. It was a pretty wild release, uh, watched a fair bit of it, did watch it all, I went over to the Ford to get all the specs so it gets you to the show. But look, they had Joe Biden, the President of America, spruiking about it yesterday, driving it uh, in a closed course, because as we all know, the US presidents are not allowed to have a license anymore. So he uh, can never drive, even after you finish your presidency, which I thought was pretty interesting, they can never drive a car ever again. Um, they have to be uh, driven at all times, they can only drive on their own property um, when they're surrounded by secret service. So very interesting fact. So that's obviously why he did it on a closed course and not a highway, because he cannot by law do it in America. So pretty interesting. Um, he's broken it, he's pushing it. It's probably a little bit of favoritism. Ford's one of the biggest companies. Um, so I guess there's a little few backhanders and favors there, but it's a massive, massive deal to have this car pushing electrical vehicles, uh, and it's it's a big, big deal. Right, now let's talk about the car. Electric truck 2022, we should see these. Um, you can use stuff like the phone as the key. Uh, you can power a home for three days on the battery. So fully charged battery, uh, you can power the home for three days. It's got 9.6 kilowatts of power there. Um, it'll do 10, 10 days of your home on rationing power. 
you do have to have the Ford, um, what do they call it? Um, Ford Power Pro thing at the home, charged 80, they've got an 80 amp Ford Charge Pro at home that you put in your house. While it's plugged into that, it will use technology to chop and change. If it's not charging your car, or if your power, your house runs out of your power, then it'll use that to back feed it into your house and keep it running till the power comes on, vice versa. So that I think is a pretty good feature. That in the hybrid that come out, that's currently out at the moment, they had a lot of that with the Texas storms. And I think that was a pretty cool feature. And I think that alone is gonna help sell a lot. Uh, especially for rural customers that could lose power, with one power line going down, you might lose all these farms and stuff. You now have the ability to back your ute up and get power for essential stuff like fridges and food and whatever you need that's essential items. So that's a pretty cool feature that I haven't really heard about from the other manufacturers of electric vehicles, but Ford has made it one of their sort of niche things, I guess. Now it's got 11 outlets in the car. There's four in the front trunk, they call it. Uh, there's two in the cab, four in the back tray. There's also, they're all 120 volts. Now also in the back tray, there's one 240 volts. So that's interesting for us Australians as well because we only run 240 volts. We don't do the low voltage stuff. Um, so what they're gonna do, if it ever gets into right-hand drive and come to Australia and other countries with that, that side of things, that's gonna be interesting whether they've got a whack in extra and inverters and stuff to get the power up for us or there's probably going to be something they need to think about. I'm sure they've thought about it at the moment. I don't really think that they're going to be worrying about other countries with this vehicle at the moment. But look, they've got one 240 in there, so at least you've got one option there. That's in the boot to do your power, to power in whatever tooling or charging sets for your uh, battery tools and stuff. So that's pretty darn cool. Um, we talked about the home charger. It's got a standard standard range, so the standard battery mode, you'll get 230 miles, which is about 370 kilometers. Not too bad. If you buy the extended, extended battery pack, you can't really do a build and price as yet. All you can do is put a $100 deposit. So I'm not sure the difference in prices and, and whatever, all the different levels. Uh, the extended battery pack is 300 miles or 480 kilometers, which is fine. That's gonna get you through a week, roughly, most cars will probably do 400 on the worst case, 500 kilometers in a week, uh, going to and from work and running around town doing stuff. Um, so 300 miles is a good little benchmark for a starting point for the first ever one. So that's pretty cool. I think most people are gonna opt for that extended battery pack. Um, I can't imagine there'd be too many going for the standard range unless it's just budget work stuff for companies. Uh, twin motor, uh, it's, running, it's running a twin motor system, 15.5 inch, massive 15.5 inch touchscreen. It's got an inbuilt knob in the screen, no idea why, uh, for volume controls and other stuff. It's a little bit funky in that regards. Um, yeah, I hate to know what it's going to cost to replace if that cracks or whatever. So hopefully it's got a gorilla glass on that so when kids get in there they don't smash it or someone's putting timber through or tooling or whatever comes through and cracks it. Uh, I'd be definitely looking in the aftermarket world or selling screen protectors for these trucks. Uh, it's probably gonna be a big business. Um, and some portrait config, so that's a big screen. It's gonna be rough, I reckon be like close to that high and that wide. So it's a big, big screen. So plenty of room for maps and phone calls and music and all the other stuff you have to worry about to control in the cab systems. Now starting prices, 40,000 US base up to 91,000. So that's pretty good. 40,000 is not a bad little starting point for these for the entry level. That's gonna be pretty good. I'd say most is gonna be around the 50 mark. Um, so that's gonna be about 70 to 80 Australian. By the time we get our taxes, which we talked about the other day, we're looking at 150, easy. I reckon by the time we get there and convert it, uh, so they're still gonna be in the same ballpark, 150 to 200 grand for us here in Australia. Um, but look, I don't, I don't think we're gonna see these for a while. They're gonna, they've gotta swap out all their petrol cars over to these. There's gonna be a lot of people upgrading to these. I foresee, I believe, I hope anyway. Um, so yeah, I can't imagine they're gonna be worried about too many other countries. They've got 300 million people in America they wanna sell these to first and then worry about everyone else. I guess they'll allocate a small amount to other countries 
Um, right hand drive is going to be the tricky bit, whether they, there's been no sort of talk about right hand drive, if they're going to do it. Being electric, it should be easier. There should be less stuff to worry about. There's no steering columns. It's going to be all fly by wire, as far as I know. So I'm assuming that should be uh, make things a lot simpler. Now, um, it'll do 10,000 pounds towing, roughly about five tons. Uh, 2,000 pounds in the back of the ute, so it's only 900 kilos. So it's not a, a dedicated, it's not a full one ton ute, which we're used to in Australia. Uh, all of our utes that we made, even the old Commodores and all that, and the Fords, were all ton utes, even the ranges of tonner. Uh, strange that this doesn't, you know, you're not able to carry a full ton in there. It's a little bit weird. Um, you think it would have been at least 2,200 pounds given it that full ton rating. So that could be just a niggling point, I guess. Um, but it does have some funky stuff with the trailer on that. You can use the app. It, has, it does have a scale system for your, for your back of your tray so you can see how much weight the guy that's putting the dirt in the local concrete joint when you go by your soil. Uh, when he says, yeah, there's a ton in there, you go, well, actually, mate, there's only 670 kilos. I want the rest of your dirt. I'm not paying you the money. So that could be a little bit of fun stuff there for you tradies to uh, not get ripped off as much because I'm sure it happens. Um, 563 horsepower, and this would be the only extended range one. That's the only figures I gave. 775 foot-pound of torque. Uh, not too bad electric. Electric, you'd think there'd be a lot more torque in there. Uh, I know the Teslas and some of the others have torque and ridiculous torque features, uh, torque amounts. But 775, that's a ton of torque. Uh, that's pretty cool. Zero to 60, mid four seconds. Look, that's three seconds faster than the original Lightning, which they said it was gonna. Is it like groundbreaking like, like that Lightning was? No, it's not a bullet. I would have thought they would bring out, possibly they'll bring out some sort of uh, city version or drag version or something like that and give us a two and a half second truck. That would be a Lightning to me. Um, Calling it a lightning just because it's electric, I can understand why, but that lightning name has a proud heritage of being ridiculously super fast, high powered V8. Now you've got an electric car that's pretty much stock standard, and yeah, it's quicker, but that was 1993, 28 years ago. It's only got three seconds faster. You'd think it would be. They've got to get that four seconds down uh, if they want to badge a lightning, I think. That's just my personal preference. Um, now, it's got Pro Trail or Auto Connect, which is something cool. Basically, you select the gear and the truck will, like that auto parking feature in a lot of cars, this will auto back up. It'll pick up where the trailer uh, mount is and it'll back your tow ball until it's perfect and then stop exactly under it. It's got uses the cameras and sensors. And then you, all you have to do is get out then, go out, lower it down straight onto the tow ball. So that I thought was pretty cool, especially for fishermen. Uh, a super handy feature when you're trying to load the boat in the morning by yourself and you're meeting the blokes at the boat ramp. So super handy, uh, especially for big boats. And as I said, in the morning when it's dark and you're half asleep, it's three in the morning, you've got, you've got to be at the boat ramp at four. Uh, so I thought that was pretty cool. Um, you can stow the shifter as well, which was one of the features that was early on talked about, and that gives you a flat bench to work your laptop if you're working for yourself. So on the businessman side and contractor side, it's gonna have a lot of versatility. Uh, tailgate's got a work surface, a pen, a holder, phone holder will stand it up, cup holder, usual. It's even got C-clamp spots, so you can lock in a bit of timber and cut it. Uh, steel, whatever you're doing, it's got a ruler marked in the in the tailgate. Some really good trading features in there. Uh, the front is a full, got basically waterproof front. Uh, it's fully sealed. It's got tie downs. 14 cubic feet of storage in the front for your shopping and general stuff. If you don't want to put in the ute, it's going to roll around or get wet. So that's pretty cool. You can keep that for the heavy duty stuff. Um, uh, and they're saying that's going to be largest in all electric utes at Frunk. So that's going to be interesting. It's a new thing, the Frunk, uh, with these electric cars. I'm sure they're going to, it's going to be one of the ones they can now add in there. We've got the biggest Frunk and all that sort of stuff. So pretty cool. Um, it does have a drain in there so you can wash it out if something gets, something spills, it gets dirty, something, a tomato jar breaks or something, you can wash that out. 
Um, now the three models, uh, XLT, Lariat, and the Platinum. So that XLT will be the 40 grand, and your 90 grand one is gonna be a Platinum. And then I'm assuming once they start getting all the features locking in, after you've done your reservation, then you'll pick the model and the stuff from there on. You can't really pick it all now. So look, I think it's gonna be huge. It's a big, not a game changer, but it's having the bigger selling car go electric is a huge, huge deal. Uh, you have to be have to be now convinced that if they're gonna do that with the bigger selling ute, that electric cars are here to stay. Anyone who doesn't wanna do it, a la Toyota, is gonna be way behind if they do it. Um, Ford, te Tesla's, your Sony, they went full on in electric. Uh, your Rivian's coming, that's gonna be a fantastic ute. I don't think the Cybertruck's gonna sell as many now because you've got this, which is a pure, ute turned electric and it's got still got that ute feel and they're going to sell a crap load of these now uh switching over from electric to big bad boy utes to macbook quickly uh, mark german uh, has come out with some uh, some information some i guess some some foreshadowing he believes the macbook pro is going to get two options now these are the ones due out this year, new shape. It's gonna be like the iMac. Uh, it's gonna be squared off, all the same stuff that the iPad. Uh, the new watch, iPhone 7, is gonna be squared off now, so they're gonna change that to a square shape. It's all going that way, so it'd be crazy if we don't get the 14 and 16, which is what's coming, in that same shape. But they're gonna have a new version of an M1, bigger and better. So the M1 is four and eight uh, cores currently. Um, this one's, the new ones are gonna have in the pro versions are eight and 10 cores with 16 or 32 for the GPU and up to 64 gigs of memory. So six, memory hasn't changed. This is, mine's a 64 gig here, uh, but that we're looking, we know what the M1's capable of, we're four and eight. Uh, and just imagine what these pro laptops are gonna be with eight and 10 core M1 style chips. It's gonna be ridiculous. Um, and then the new Mac Pro, uh, they reckon it's gonna be double the Mac books. So some crazy stuff. There's a new Mac Mini Pro or whatever is coming out as well. But look, I think this is gonna be good. Now it's gonna have a new neural engine as well and that's gonna allow for more Thunderbolt ports, which is good. You can plug more stuff in, which is always handy. I'm sure it's all, it's all Thunderbolts, which we're starting to get more stuff that suits. Uh, my OWC, one that I use, has worked a treat. So if you're looking for one, let me know down below and I'll give you the model I'm using. Uh, it is so much better as an adapter going into my MacBook and just hasn't faltered at once. So very cool. And the last quick one, but not least, oh, sorry, before that, iMac 24 inch, apparently due out May 21. So that's tomorrow for us. So it'll be Saturday, realistically, in Australia in stores, no real big announcements. I think it's just gonna come out. It's probably looking at the same specs, just a bigger screen in that format. So all the same colors, it's gonna be just basically a bigger version. That's in stores on Saturday Australia time, Friday if you're over in the States. Last but not least, we did report about the IBM getting a two nanometer chip and how crazy that is. Well, TSMC, the world leader at the moment, has announced they've already de they've developed and finished developing a one nanometer chip. How do you have a zero nanometer chip? What's the next thing down from a nanometer? That's the next big question. Uh, crazy times in technology. I hope you're all fantastic. I'll see you all again tomorrow. You come in this way, that way. Stay safe. Get yourself an electric U. Peace out.